It's great to be back in the people's house. There are so many great memories I have in this building. I served nearly 10 years in a couple of different capacities, and I, I couldn't help but think when I walked in the door, um, the time that I spent in the house, walked in in 2013, representing an 80-20 district in Forsyth County, that's 80 percent Republican district in Forsyth County, and learning the process of how to pass a bill, working with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to take on organized crime, to help rural hospitals. Then I think about the time that I decided to run for lieutenant governor. And uh, many people in this state said I was too conservative to actually be a statewide elected official. But by the grace of God, we won that election and we worked for four tough years. We worked across the aisle, worked with Leader Butler and others to bring meaningful legislation forward. We passed over 50 bipartisan health care bills. We took on COVID reform and we passed a very important hate crimes piece of legislation. There's also some tough memories in this building I've got. We were second guest on COVID almost every minute of every day from the White House, specifically Donald Trump. Lies, conspiracy theories around the 2020 election, so much so that I had to have armed guards around my office in my home, around my family, just to fight off the fact I didn't admit that the election was rigged because it wasn't. Fake electors sat just a few feet from us, sat in a room and tried to usurp democracy. And then the unfortunate events of January 6 showed up and sitting in this building watching those events play out were a huge part of why I'm standing here today. All of those tough memories seem to track back to one person and one person only, and that's Donald Trump. Going against the grain as a Republican and supporting Democrat Joe Biden for president is not easy. But I'm not, running, I'm not looking at this election through the lens of being a Republican. I'm looking through the lens of being an American. An American that cares more about the future of my country than the moral bankrupt nominee of my party. There are political ramifications to this decision, but they pale in comparison to four more years of Donald Trump, both home and abroad. Let me speak directly to the millions of Republicans across the country who are tired of making excuses for Donald Trump's behavior at their churches, in their offices, and at their own kitchen tables. Enough is enough. The nightmare has to end, and it has to end now. It's time for us to purge Donald Trump from our system. Let's take the next four years as Republicans and build and heal a new party, a GOP 2.0, a party that finds leaders that are willing to embrace conservative principles and work across the aisle. Leaders that understand the value of civility and compromise. That once again value honesty and integrity. A party that uses policy, empathy, and tone to work across that aisle, to gain majorities, to talk about issues. Use it as our North Star. The last four years have been difficult for our family, the journey, but a journey that's been worth traveling. There have been so many folks over the last four years, nearly four years, Republicans specifically, that have come up and offered words of encouragement, that have quietly sent notes, have praised the, the, the notion of saying and doing the right thing. It's my time to ask a favor of all those thousands and thousands of Republicans across the country who have who've given us words of encouragement. I have an ask. My ask is this. It is your time to do the right thing. Don't give Donald Trump four more years to continue to destroy this country. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's Same Cast, Different Day Podcast. I'm Arta Roland. And I'm Tina. So I just wanted to play that clip as soon as the show started because that's how you know how bad things would be if a whole, somebody from the Republican Party comes out does a press conference about supporting Joe Biden as the next president of the United States or the president for next two years. So all I have to say is way to go. And hopefully more uh, Republicans come out, uh, you know, supporting Donald Trump and not, you know, I mean, I mean, not, I mean, not support Donald Trump, support Joe Biden and not supporting uh, Donald Trump's uh, crusade that he has going on for uh, power. Because Tina had recently sent me a video, not a video, it was an article about Trump 25. But 
before we get into Trump 25. Um, it's called Project 25. Project, project 2025. Right, project, right, right. Project 2025. Um, I want to talk about the Republican um, debate. And I have got that debate had came on, so I had caught like caught it like towards the end after the last commercial break. And the fact that I didn't need to go online and fact check him and knew that he was lying about half the stuff he was saying was just crazy. Even though like right after the um what they call it, the debate went off. There was already clips online of was I think one of the ones I saw was CNN, and they had fact checked Donald Trump and all his major key points that he basically was making about Joe Biden and and, and how you know Russia has taken so much land and all this kind of stuff. It was all a lie. Every hmm. single thing they they, they Shocking. most of his bullet points that he tried to say was basically lies. Shocking. And uh, one the one thing that stood out to me the most, and I have a clip for it, and this is the one thing that stood out to me the most. I'm like, did he just really say that? So I want to play the clip for y'all. The fact is that his big kill on the black people is the millions of people that he's allowed to come in through the border. They're taking black jobs now. And it could be 18, it could be 19, and even 20 million people. They're taking black jobs, and they're taking Hispanic jobs, and you haven't seen it yet, but you're going to see something that's going to be the worst in our history. Thank you. Y'all know the internet is not going to fail us. Look at the list. Oh, my God. <laughs> Y'all got to see last tech. I'm weak. Come on now. Hype man. Oh, selling plates. Where does it go? <laughs> Look at 37, sexy red. I'm weak as fuck. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Oh, Jesus. Get it together, food. The Popeye's cashier. Come up. Okay. You know, black people don't take nothing seriously. They don't take nothing serious, but the fact that he said black jobs and Hispanic jobs at first. I was like, what is a black job? Like, I didn't know that was a thing, like a black job and a Hispanic job, but we already know what a lot of Hispanics do, which is uh, working, picking fruits and um, construction. But the point is, I didn't know it was a, such a thing as black jobs. So, and then when they had, I guess, black people want to create a list of black jobs, and you know, you saw CNA, NFL cornerback, like all kinds of just. Uh, but it was just the fact that this man went on national television and really said black job. Well, so my take from that is, you know, I'm going to dive a little deeper, right? So you're not going to tell me that he was pushing the whole building of this wall on the Mexican border because he was worried about immigrants taking black jobs. You ain't going to tell me that that was used while he was building that wall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. So there's that, but yeah, that was interesting. I mean, he, you know what? I didn't get a chance to watch the debate because I quite honestly didn't know it was on. I was busy doing other things, but when I woke up the next morning, child, the blogs was in shambles. I didn't even have to watch it. <laughs> and then blogs uh, was in shambles. It it was, and then on top of that, like the fact that he was like, um. Well, Biden had made the point where, you know, he was trying to work with Republicans about securing the border and they kept shutting it down. They kept shutting it down. The idea of him securing the border was because of Donald Trump going on TV or on, on Twitter and all these other things talking about don't support Joe Biden's bill. And Joe Biden was like, well, hey, you know, I had this bill in place, you know, to stop, you know, the top to stop drugs from coming in from. Um, you know, Mexico and from Korea and all these other places that the drug was coming from. He's like, I wanted to buy these machines that can screen, uh, that can screen things and they can screen, you know, to detect drugs, you know, in like packages and all this other kind of stuff. So that way, you know, it, it they can't basically ship drugs over here. 
And and here goes Donald Trump telling them, no, we're not going to agree today. You shouldn't agree to that. Basically, I feel like the plan that Joe Biden put forward as far as like the whole U.S.-Mexico border, Donald Trump wants, you know, the Republicans to strike down whatever but Joe Biden had planned for it. And then well, I feel like if Trump was to get reelected into office, the same exact plan that we're going to set Joe Biden was going to try to do, Trump is going to try to do to make it seem like it was his idea. Of course. <laughs> but I will tell you on the blogs after people watched that debate, um, there was a lot of support for Biden when I was reading the comments. Still some support for Trump, but not as much as before the um, before the debate. People was just the fact that he said they're going to take immigrants and take black jobs, like, that's all they needed to hear. I mean, that, and it, it's just a lot of stuff he was saying. He was like, if Biden stays in office, he's going to create World War Three. He said that Biden spent like six billion dollars on trying to get people hostages. He said when when I was negotiating to get the hostages back, I didn't have to pay anybody. I didn't have to pay nothing. Like, sir, what what did you really negotiate? First of all, and then second, there was some hostages. That's what I'm. That's also because I don't remember no hostages being hostage at the time where Trump was in office. And if it was a hostage that was over in Russia, some food in our friends. Your friends, so you're not going to sit here and tell me that you know you didn't have to pay no money. Of course, you did. If you and if somebody was under a hostage and you didn't have to pay any money, it's because you and Putin's are friends. And then he was talking about how Russia is taking land and all this kind of stuff. Russia took land under the Bush administration, Russia took land from uh, I guess other countries under the um Obama administration. It didn't happen under mine, but so it happened under everybody else's administration. Besides his, and I'm just like this man feeding, feeding the trying to feed the general public a bunch of bull. He probably giving them something other than land that they want, and probably the other presidents um, wouldn't get like wouldn't give in. Yeah, and so the other uh, president, the other presidents probably didn't give in to the demands, and then that's where it came from. Exactly. That's that's where the conflict came from. More than I can think of, because he sat up there and said that he wasn't in cahoots or in bed with Russia, and then he he be kicking it with Putin. Exactly. So, so. Uh, it was a, it was a, a lot of lying, like even with the whole January sixth thing, and the fact that he wouldn't answer the question that uh, if at the um, after the November election, and he did not win. Re he didn't win the seat. And he did not become president of the United States. He didn't win the election. Will he accept the results of the elections? And for five to six minutes, he refused to answer that question. And the fact that he said that he had better places to be, like he could be on a golf course somewhere uh, and, and all these other things. He said, I didn't have to be here, but I saw how Joe Biden was running this country into the ground and he was going to make it a third world country. So that's why, you know, I decided to run for president again. I'm like, but for a person who didn't root, so to me, it's not like you don't care about being president is what you're saying to me. But back in 2020, when you lost the election, you did all these lawsuits. You were trying to do everything possible to overturn the results of the election. So if being a president really don't matter to you, why are you re re running for president again? Because it's a it's a deeper agenda. And I'm glad now it's kind of coming forth with the whole Project 2025 thing. Like, uh, I don't have that. Because you sent it to me in a text message and now you got it. Hold on. I okay. It. I can't pull well, it up on the computer. Let's see. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, I can always talk about it. So I will say there's two different versions oh, okay. of it. Um, so and when I mean said, versions, go oh, ahead. You got it on your thing? No, I, I got it right. It's the here's the taste of uh Trump's project 2025, it right? Says, so, disclaimer there's two different versions. So, it's the actual project 2025 website, and then Biden has a website also that kind of like 
pulls out the ulterior motives of Project Mm -hmm. 2025. But I felt like when I went to the original website, it was even more messed up, just the way that it was worded, than how it said on Biden's website. But you go ahead. I'm going to pull up the actual website. You talked about what Biden said. So I got it on Joe. It's on JoeBiden.com. And it says, here are the takeaways from Trump's Project 2025. Take away reproductive freedoms nationwide. Use the presidency for revenge on Trump's political and personal enemies. Terminate the Constitution. Consolidate consolidate powers in the Oval Office. Gut democratic, democratic checks and balances on presidential power. Give handouts to the ultra wealthy paid by working families, which I do got a video for y'all to, to talk about that. And and it says much and much, much more. Crazy, right? So mm-hmm. I'm on heritage.org, okay? And um I believe this is the company or the foundation that is behind organizing project 2025 okay mm-hmm. so what they're doing is a policy book that's going to be published called mandate for leadership um i believe it is stemming from i'm, I'm trying to look for to see which president it was i don't know if it started in like the reagan administration um so don't quote me on that but these are things that um basically the republican party has been putting and piecing together um for years so let me see so basically they want to like what it said in the biden administration what happened Oh no! Also, I was just, uh, repeat offender, which I know who it is. My cousin. He was like, "What is a oh. black job?" And they was talking about CNAs, uh, football players, uh, construction uh, was one of them. Working at the Waffle House, working at Popeyes. They said that, that some people label those as black jobs. <laughs> so the people that are like the heads of the Project Twenty Twenty Five. I believe one was Speaker of the House for Trump. Like they were all in the Trump administration. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know the head of it is he was the Speaker, uh, Speaker of the House. Okay. Um, so that right there kind of creeped me out. And then when I was reading through the website, they were like, oh, we got to save the country from the radical left something 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 and like they were just going into all of this extra stuff and i was just like okay this is or the far right i'm sorry Mm -hmm. like this this was i was like i was like oh my god that's for real right so it's like what they're trying to do they made this this book they're going to publish this book and it's supposed to have like these pillars that they're supposed to follow so I feel like it's going to be kind of like in waves, right? So mm-hmm. they're going to start with wave one and they're going to continue until they get to their end growth goal. So that's why I'm like, this, I feel like, I feel like Trump is, I don't want to say attachment. What is it called when somebody is just a face but doesn't make up the ideas? Like, he's the faith for the Republican Party, right? Because they feel like he has the skill set I mean, like to puppet. convince people. Yes. So I feel like he's a puppet for ultimately what their ideals are. He's not really coming up with any of these ideals. They put him in that position to um, convince the general public that to follow because he's very convincing. He's a businessman, right? So mm-hmm. he can be very convincing. He You know, he's had time in the public, you know, as far as, you know, he know how marketing goes. Like, it's just, to me, it's like a scheme. Uh, It's a whole marketing scheme. Oh, it's not going to show, but they have it highlighted in red, too, for some of the stuff that he's trying to do. 
far as uh as his revenge things. Right. So, but but so when I was reading it on their page, like this is going to be a long process because they're trying to take basically take back the country from the Democrats. And I'm like, that's not even what this is about. Like now in my head, I'm thinking like civil war type of you know what I'm saying? But, so like when you say take back the country for the Democrats, here's the thing. Majority right now is Republicans. That is majority, right? Republicans rule mostly everything right now. We have most of the states are Republican led states. So, what do you mean take back the country from the Democrats? And I feel like they knew because within, I think they had a last election where senators and stuff had to get voted for. And a lot of people were voting Democrat because, once again, they're sick of these policies that Republicans are putting together. This is the man that said that's basically saying. On day one as president, he is going to be a dictator as day one. As soon as he's elected, he's going to become a dictator. Uh, he claims if he loses, it's going to be a bloodbath. He threatens to prosecute uh, political opponents if he uh, if he uh, wins another term. He uh, says, uh, what else did he say? He says he, he threatens to deport uh, uh, protesters for exercising their right to free speech. He also shared online videos that call for violence against journalists and uh and unified. Um, what else did he say? He has threatened to uh defund law enforcement agencies and go after law enforcement uh, law law enforcement uh, law officers who dare to stand in his way. Yeah. So basically, if Trump get reelected, all of this goes and it, all of, this whole plan is implemented. When he's elected, if he gets reelected, excuse and then, me. And then also says he plans to uh, fire and replace independent uh, civil servants across the government yep. with extreme mega, uh, with mega uh, lawyers, loyalists. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. He uh, he wants to. Um, what else was there? Trump plans to bring historically independent agency directly under his control, including the Department of Justice. Uh, he wants to dismantle key departments of the executive branch, including the Department of Education. Yeah. He wants to, uh, what else it says? In 2016, Trump infamously said you have to ban abortions and that there are there has to be some form of punishment for women who get them. Uh, he followed, he said he, uh, he plans on following through with their prom uh, promises. He, uh, Trump, uh, Donald Trump is probably responsible for overturning Roe, uh, the Roe versus Wade, ripping women's, uh, whipping women's, uh, rights away from, uh, the right to get basically have an abortion. Um, uh, Trump owns, uh, every single attack on reproductive health care from abortions to assault on birth control and stopping IVF, IVF treatments across the country. Uh, take it from Trump himself. These bans were only made possible because I deliver everything as promised. Yeah, he, he also wants to eliminate Head Start programs. He wants to restrict LGBTQ plus rights um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and remove diversity, um, equity, and inclusion initiatives from federal programs. He wants to reinstate the reinstate the Comstock Act, Act with limits mail order abortion pills um what is what else is it halting the expansion of electrical grid for wind and sol solar energy um it's it's a lot it's, like uh, you okay. already yes he wants to make it he wants to make it easier to buy a gun than uh than access some birth control and reproductive care uh he wants to criminalize the shipping of abortion medication uh, he's going to building a surveillance state to track women and healthcare providers. Uh, use the power of the federal government to crack down on reproductive freedoms nationally. And the thing, the thing is, here's the thing: like, so now he wants to get rid of HIPAA also because to basically to track what a woman is doing with her health and providers. That basically means that you want to get rid of HIPAA laws, which means now everybody's. You know, personal health care information is just going to be out there for anybody to just basically go and read and figure out what's going on with a person. 
Like, what is I don't I don't know what this man is thinking at this point. Like, cocaine has to be one hell of a drug that he's doing. I don't even think it's drugs, man. It's it's the audacity. It's the it's the audacity. It's the privilege, right? Right. It's that it's that whole thought process. Like, it, it's the thought that it's like they they want they're going to get rid of democracy. It mm -hmm. will be a dictatorship. Mm hmm. And then. You, the everybody think the country going to hell in a handbasket now, then potentially we're all going to be, we, it's like they're eliminating free will. Right. You know, we won't be able to do or make choices for a lot of things. We won't have access to federal programs. We need it. Like, how are you going to try to dissolve the Department of Education? That don't even make any sense. And if you dissolve the Department of ed Education, it means everybody's going to have to go through private banks to get these loans. It's already bad, hard enough to pay off a, a loan from the Department of Education. So I can only imagine getting a loan from an actual bank bank to try to go to school. So now you're going to have, you know, this next generation of people. You're not going to have lawyers. You're not going to have doctors. You're not going to have healthcare providers. Like a lot of jobs that do require you to have a degree. If people, if the Department of Education is not there to provide them services, then how are you going to have your next doctor or your next lawyer or your next nurse or any of these type of but, critical things that we need? But that's the point. That's how they control people, right? So only people that come from families that can afford it would get these type of educations, right? This is how mm -hmm. it was back in the day. So the same way slaves were forbidden to learn how to read. Right. Right. So it kind of all go back to that. And it's so crazy where we already got. Is he a governor? Is governor of Florida with, with the book man? Ron DeSantis. Yeah. OK. So he attacking education at a state level. They will be attacking education at a federal level. You right. know what I'm saying? And and that's a terrible spot for our country to be in. If anything, yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like education and healthcare should be free. Yeah, like like over over some other countries, like they say like like right now, like they pay well, I don't know what our national uh as far as federal taxes. I don't know how much the rate is, but I know it isn't as much as theirs. But overseas, I forgot what country it is, they pay like thirty some percent taxes. But within that thirty percent taxes, you know they get. What do they, I mean, they still paying for the service out of the way they go through the taxes. But out of that taxes, they don't have to worry about you know schooling. I believe even going to college is free. Uh, health care, they have universal health care. Health care is free. Child care is free. So anything you could possibly need to go to work to basically just go to work and live, it's free. And I wouldn't mind paying 30% in taxes if I don't have to worry about paying for any of that stuff. Because in reality, what? I'm paying over $600 a month for health care. And it's like, we're healthy. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that money is just going yeah, to the insurance company and I'm not using it. You paying for something just in case something happened like car insurance. Car insurance is the biggest scam, but that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So yeah, I would definitely play for free child care, free free health care, um, and free education. You know, when it comes down to it being thirty percent of my income, I I wouldn't care. And then speaking of taxes, and this is Donald Donald Trump saying, so uh believe this man is Asian, but he, he said he did a breakdown of like Donald Trump's tax plan that even the Republicans thought was stupid. So I want to play that clip for y'all. If Trump wins the next election, it will cost the average American household five thousand extra dollars in taxes. If Trump wins the next election, it will cost the average American household five thousand extra dollars in taxes. Trust me, I'm Asian and I'm a data scientist. I actually did the math. And yesterday, Donald Trump met with some of the top CEOs in the country, and we actually learned that Trump proposed cutting taxes for corporations and wealthy Americans, among other ideas. 
I don't know why half this country cucks this jackass trying to cut taxes for himself like he's even going to be around to enjoy it. He's fucking going to jail. Why are you bothering to make him president? Like, I don't fucking understand. Trump basically wants to fully extend those 2017 cuts. He wants to see the corporate tax rate at 21% and reportedly even a little bit lower than that, according to what he told some of those CEOs yesterday. He also wants to extend tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans. And he's even thrown out some pretty unusual ideas like tariffs on all U.S. imports, possibly even substituting tariffs for an income tax or something a lot of economists I'm talking to say would be really challenging. I'm tired of people using fancy words to make dumb shit sound smarter than it actually is. Like, he wants to tax all the shit that you buy in order to cover the taxes that the rich people and corporations already owe off of the money that they made off of you. Trump had another closed door meeting on his calendar while he was in D.C., back at the Capitol for the first time, or Capitol Hill for the first time since the January 6th attack. He spoke to a group of business leaders while in town. Among the big names there, Tim Cook, Jamie Dimon, and CNBC's Brian Schwartz reports that Mr. Trump told the group of CEOs that he would cut personal and corporate taxes and slash business regulations if he wins in November. So, like, let me get this straight. For the last hundred years, the government has been taking shit out of your paycheck as income tax. And everybody was supposed to pay that shit. But, like, over time, they started bribing the government to give them fucking loopholes. And now, all of a sudden, normal people can't afford to fucking live. And so they're like, damn, we can't squeeze any more money out of middle class and lower class Americans. Let's just get rid of the tax rate and make everybody pay the same tax on fucking orange juice. And, and in your head, if you're stupid, you might think, oh, yeah, that, that, that sounds fairer than a progressive tax. You know, like, everybody's paying the same tax. Trump wants to eliminate the income tax and replace it with tariffs without realizing this is a policy that would severely damage the poor and middle class. If you're not familiar, tariffs are basically taxes we charge on imported goods. Over the last five years, it's been between 40 and $120 billion per year in tariff revenue. For the past five to 10 years, we've gotten about three to $5 trillion in total tax revenue per year. And guess how much of that comes from the income tax? Uh, half. To this day, I don't know how the fuck the dumbest person in this country became president of the United States, but doesn't know the difference between the number three and fucking two. It's like, hold on, someone told him the word tariff, and it's like, I don't know what that is, but it sounds right. Let's just put a tariff on everything. That'll cover the two trillion in taxes that we owe in income. And it's like, we only bought three trillion dollars worth of shit. What are you going to tax me on three trillion to cover two trillion? Like, are you going to make my iPhone cost like six grand? Like, is a fucking Honda Civic going to cost me 70K? Like, how the fuck are you taxing me close to 100% on the shit that I spend to cover the bills? Like, what the... I felt that man's frustration at when he at the end of that. And when you think about it, like you said, like iPhone is gonna cost six thousand, you're gonna pay seventy thousand dollars for a Honda Civic. It's like you're gonna make it unlivable for middle class and lower class Americans to be able to survive in this country. Like, why would you say, oh yeah, the, the millionaires and billionaires are not gonna pay taxes at all? And then instead of to and make up for that tax debt. We're going to charge, you know, a tariff, do a tariff tax on everything and then make, you know, you know, make the middle class and lower class people somehow be able to come up with two, what he said, two to three trillion dollars. I don't even think it's enough. You, It's not even enough Americans working right now where y'all, we were, we can, they can cover not enough middle class Americans, right? That's working right now that can cover, you know, two to three trillion dollars in income tax revenue like make it make sense and then it's crazy because you had heard of some of these ceos saying you know i really it like me paying that what i'm supposed to pay in taxes i'm not going to miss it i'm not really going to notice that that money is gone so it's like why do we need this why do you think that this is a good idea i just it it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. It's it's stupid. All of it is stupid. He don't know what he's talking about. He's just saying yes, like I said again, he a puppet, right? Mm -hmm. He don't really understand what that's gonna mean because he not poor. When when was the last time he was poor? You get what I'm saying? Like when was the last time? Like I don't know if his parents were working middle class or whatever. You know what I'm saying? The like I don't understand it. The last time he was poor is when his dad was like, pow, right in the pussy. Um, that was the last time he was poor. That's on that's the only thing I can think of. That's the last time, like I said, Donald Trump don't know nothing about being poor. The fact that he wants to throw the whole entire, you know, 
burden of this country having money to be able to run this country on the middle class and lower class people is just fucking ridiculous. And he needs to be stopped. At, at some point, this man needs to be stopped before we have to pass the food. <laughs> we de- it's definitely going to be some type of riot. And I have Let me a go map. buy a new phone. Now. Right. <laughs> I, have, I have a video message from uh, a TikTok user that I feel like a lot of African American people need to see and hear. So I'm going to play that video. I don't know who needs to hear this, so I'm going to speak to my black people because we need to have a conversation. Stay with me. The work of the previous administration is reflected in the current administration. Remember that. Most of you all around my age, so I'm going to go through a timeline. I want you to think about it as I say this. 2004, 2008, Bush is president. 2008, who gets in office? Obama. What happens in 2008? Housing crisis, financial crisis, gas. All that happens. It lasts for about four years. That's 2008, 2012. 2012, 2016, we have Obama. Stuff starts to get better. You understand? Starts to get a little bit better. Now, here's the part where everybody starts to say, I love life. 2016, 2020, Donald Trump is in office. The year you all say you love is 2016, right? Who was the previous president? Right. Now, here's the part. 2020, 2024, Who was the previous president? Does that make sense? That is what I be saying when I say the previous administration, their efforts affect the next administration. Keep that in mind when you go to the polls. Thank you. I mean, well, I knew that the the current president is cleaning up the messes of the previous president. I knew that. Yeah, but you know a lot of people who don't know that hell. It's it's people who are in their sixties, fifties, and forties who don't even know, you know, the branches of government. Don't even know how government works. Don't know how it goes from president down to your, you know, your uh, alderman. They don't know the process of that. Like, and I I keep telling people, yeah, so you can have a democratic president, but. If we don't go vote for our senators and stuff like that, you know that dem and and that Democratic president now has a house full of senators, Republican senators. He's not going to be able to get any bill passed, and vice versa. If a uh, if a Republican president has majority majority Democratic senators, it's going to be hard for that Republican president to be able to get bills passed in his favor. So it only like so. If, if I feel like the government. Or whoever's in that time, president at that time, things are only going to work their way if the Senate is basically majority, the Senate in the House, whatever, it's all majority uh, Republicans. That's the only way that it's, it's going to work for them and for them to get their way. Now, I agree. A lot of people go and they only vote for, I know people who say they only vote in the presidential election. To me, whoever the president is really does not matter. Because at the end of the day, your senators and then your Supreme Court people basically make the rules, the, the law of the land anyway. Our president is really just our puppet, really, that we just go send off to go make our country look good. Like, hey, go over here and make an appearance, bitch. Like, that's what that's basically what the <laughs> <are>. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, like I said, and make sure you go vote for your your senate, your senators and stuff like that. Because because all that it matters. It it really matters. If if Joe Biden would have had majority Democratic senators in office, things would be totally different right now. There would be so many laws that would benefit the middle class America that would be passed right now. And well, I wouldn't say benefit the middle class America because I feel like a lot of the bills that he passed benefits more of the lower class Americans. Um, which is really hard for me for this, like why I said between voting for these super presidential elections, just because I don't like Donald Trump personally, I'm just not going to vote for him, which is why Joe Biden is getting my vote. But <clears throat> to be honest, if there was somebody one younger and then actually had an idea where it doesn't just like, oh, we're going to be just for the rich, rich, rich. But if there was a Republican candidate who said, hey, I got a plan for both the lower, middle and rich class, 
to try to branch these things together and run this country like the way how it should be, then I would actually vote it for that person over Joe Biden. Because to be honest, like Joe, I'm not saying Joe Biden has not done anything in general. Like I like the fact that he has lowered the cost of health care. I like the fact that he's lowered the cost of insulin or when it comes to inhalers. Um, I like the fact that he did the student loan forgiveness thing. That 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 helped middle class people. He took off a chunk of their debt, not really completely wipe it out, but took off that chunk. That chunk that he took off will help them a lot in the long run. So I'm not saying it's not stuff that he hasn't done. It's just the fact that the most of the stuff that he has done was for the beneficial of lower class people. And these are well, he tried. Lower, these are paying for the same lower class people who don't even go vote in presidential elections. Well, he tried to get rid of um, student loan debt, but remember he got pushed back. Yeah, he got pushed back, but then he found another loophole to do, to do it. He anyway. did. Yeah, Which so instead did. of a mass life out, he's been doing it in stages. Yeah. Which is smart. So like I said, like, I, I'm not saying Joe Biden is the perfect candidate, but like I said, the little freedoms that we do have, because like I said, as a black male, we don't really have the freedoms that a lot of people look at us and say, oh, you guys, you no, know, we don't have them. It's, it's not there. We can't, we know we can't walk the streets without being nervous about a police officer pulling us over. And if we, if during that traffic stop, am I going to get killed or go home to see my family again? Like that's something that we, you have to worry about as a black person in general. You know, we always got to deal with racism. We always got to deal with hate. And there's so much that we got to deal with. Like, yes, we're free, but at the same time, we're not free because we have this whole other race of people and this whole party that's still trying to repress a group of people. Yes, so I agree. So, like I said, like pretty much this whole election election to me is just a you, I'm picking the lesser of the evil, basically. I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, it's no, it's. Everything you said, and I didn't vote for Trump the first time, and I'm not going to vote for him again because, I mean, it's to me, it's plain to see. Like, so people still don't understand that the stimulus checks are part of the reason why we have inflation. You know what I'm saying? And then I still hear people talking about some, well, I'm going to vote for him because he gave us the stimulus, first of all. Like, if y'all was excited over a a, a thousand dollar check, I I don't even know what to say. And then some people didn't even get a thousand dollars because it was based upon how many dependents you filed for on your taxes, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So, so for y'all to think that's some type of money, it really wasn't. I mean, I during the whole shutdown, I still had to work full time. I was, I still went to work, so I still had income. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I understand a lot of, so the PPP loans, I agree with for small businesses because I feel like they were or would be hurt the most because they were clo uh, forced to close their doors. And if they didn't have like an online way to order things, so on and so forth, then yeah, their, their companies would go under. So I understand that part. But as far as giving people stimulus checks, but and this is like no shade, right? So you got people that, right? Say I got three kids, right? And if I made twelve thousand dollars in a year with three kids, and I was on government programs and stuff like that, I was gonna get what I think it was what, like twelve hundred dollars a kid or something like that. I think so. Or or no three four. It was like four. Three or four hundred dollars for each dependent, or something like that, right? That you um, that I, you found I think, your was, I, think, I think it was between four to, I believe it was between three to five hundred per dependent, or something like that. Yeah, right. So I got a little over a thousand dollars. I do remember that, but at the same time, like that wasn't even one of my paychecks. You get what I'm saying? So I'm just and, like, ah. And that stimulus check, no stimulus check. It was nothing but a loan that we all have. Well, people who work have to pay back. Correct. Correct. So, but then, you know, you got people that don't really work and then they file fire dependents. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, so yes, I understand like, oh, I got basically another tax return is the way 
they were looking at it. But I mean, in reality, that that is not the way that you should want to live, right? So that's the problem. And that's why middle class is getting crushed in between trying to pay. We're basically paying for both sides. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So just to base your, your vote off of that, to me, it's a little shallow. And I would like for people to dive a little bit deeper or to understand, you know, what it is that each candidate is really actually backing and then going back to look and see what was actually accomplished. And so they both had previous presidencies, right? Then do a compare and contrast and see what was, what actually what you know what I'm saying, occurred during those presidencies. And like, and like, you, like you said, Joe Biden, he served under a growing, flourishing presidency. He wasn't the president, but he was the vice president of this country that had a booming, a booming economy when he left office. And then when Trump, like it was like everything that they did, it, it's gone. They don't exist no more. Yep. yep, he was vice president for eight years. Exactly. So you know, you know what I'm saying? Saying? somebody who was vice president from AE and went through a whole entire eight years with another president who had no scandals, no type of no type of hiccups, no nothing during that presidency. And you don't try to tell me that this man don't has what it takes to run the country for the next four years. I get it. He's 86 years old. And then think about it, if something was to happen to Joe, knock on wood, but if something was to happen to Joe, hopefully nothing does. But I do have faith in Kamala Harris being able to run this country. So, and I think that's another problem that the Republican Party has. If they something happens, exactly, a black woman president. It's right. Right? That's two things that they probably don't want to see right now. We already had a black man as president, right, for the first time in our lives. And I was glad I was alive to witness that, right? Mm-hmm. Then it will turn around and it will be a black woman as president. And I, I, if you know a black woman, you already know. And I know a lot of people, um, like we don't really see her. What has she been doing? And I keep, you know, at first I felt that way, but then I'm like, she could be sitting back and cooking something up. And, and y'all don't know that about. Me. Because I heard people, I've been hearing people say that, like, what she been doing. And then when I actually went back, like. She is the one that's like out. She's not really sitting in DC on her ass doing nothing. Like she is the one that's traveling. Like she has been to Wisconsin, I believe, more than what Joe Biden has been coming to Wisconsin. So she's been the one out there doing a lot of the groundwork and a lot of the legwork for Joe Biden to get these bills passed, get the policies passed, to get people to go vote. She's been the one on the ground doing that. That's been all her. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. So it's like, I feel like she can be a lot of, you know, sitting in on these meetings that they hold with the cabinet, et cetera, et cetera. The one, you know what I'm saying? Kind of help pull pulling ideas together. Since she got boots on the ground, she has um, firsthand knowledge of what's actually happening in the country while everybody is sitting at a desk. You know what I'm saying? Right. So she can come back to them and be like, hey, this is what I saw. You know, this could be a really big problem. I have a resolution. How do we get to that? Hey, this is, you know what I'm saying? So right. I feel like, yes. I feel like, yes. So just because you don't see her in a line like, you know, holding press conferences or basically being fake, I would say, you know what I'm saying? For making a pen for appearances sake, you don't know what it is that she got cooking up. And that's a black woman for you, right? So, right. you know, I just don't, I don't understand why people are so against the notion of change. You know what I'm saying? So against the notion of change, it doesn't have to be a white man in office. It doesn't. Right. And if, I feel if, like was, if, they do, if they do want a woman to be in office, they want it to be a white woman to be the first president of the United States. Yes, I agree. And that's not even something that they want to see, be just just because of how you know what I'm saying. But it can be a Mexican American, it can be a Chinese American, it can be you know what I'm saying. As long as you were born in the United States, you can run for a president. You know what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. it can come. The president can come from any you know background, and I would love to see that diversity 
and um, inclusion into the, the top office in the land. You know what I'm saying? Because when you think of different cultures, they come with different types of experiences that previous presidents probably didn't have. You never know how it is that they might run this country. It might be for the better. And you're right. And then, um, and like I said, and I feel like, you know, when it comes to, you know, when, she, when so say like Joe Biden is trying to create, put checks and balances or put laws in place or try to come up with programs that would benefit, you know, uh, minorities. I feel like that was uh, her in his ear. You know, hey, Joe, I think we should do this. Hey, Joe, I think this program would be a great idea. You know, I feel like those things were her. Yeah. Quite quite possibly. You know what I'm saying? And if it was her, it sounds like she's being humble and modest and not wanting to take, oh, you got to tell everybody that was my idea. You know right. what I'm saying? So I, I just, you know, I want people to have a little bit of faith and stop just um, jumping to conclusions and making assumptions about a lot of different things. Like, do your fact checking. Don't just assume that nothing is being done. And I mean, I mean, the stuff that Joe Biden has accomplished, I feel like those are great things. He put a cap on a lot of different things, and 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 the stuff he's talking about doing for the next term, like making childcare affordable. Whoa, I would love to see that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I pay out of pocket for child care. I had to pay my daycare provider today. You know what I'm saying? So things like that matter to the middle class. So he understands, you know, the whole student loan thing. That's mostly a middle class thing. You know what I'm saying? So you fix the middle class. You you help heal the country. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sure. The middle class, it's the, it's the catalyst. Right. Well, that's all I have today for the, the debate. I did manage to find some videos last minute. I think it's only like three of them. Um, so, yeah. But but once the like team said, we, we all need to make the important decisions. Yeah, we all don't like Joe Biden is really old. He, he has this. I don't feel like his stutter should really father people like there's people who stutter like i don't understand why i know i know somebody that's i know somebody that's 50 years younger than him and has a stutter what are you what are we talking about exactly i mean like and then it's like oh he's seen confused all the time i was like well he knew donald trump like that clip i showed earlier with it at the debate with joe donald trump started talking about black jobs like joe biden knew that it was, it was about to be some bullshit and when how donald trump turned and looked over at donald trump like he about to say some bullshit like he he's a very aware of what's going on he is not as, as confused yeah. as he is. just because you think somebody is not a great orator which is what donald trump is right he talks a good game don't mean that they're not able to perform their job. It's a lot of great people. There's a lot of people that can perform their jobs, but if they're not good at public speaking, I know that's one thing that you know what I'm saying that comes with that job. But he don't. He not. He don't seem to be scared to talk to his people. You know what I'm saying? Like all of that stuff. I hope I make it to 86 years old. And then another thing, I wish people. I wish they was try to stop using his son is um ammo against him his son is a grown-ass man he made his choices who was probably in his 50s himself 50 60s himself so i was like oh you know my my life hit when i went on a spiral you know because it was too far after when uh the brother had died and oh, oh now i'm doing drugs and oh, i went and bought a gun while i was high like but but at this but when I went back no he wasn't even high he said he was clean or something he went to a rehab program when he went to body but it's like y'all worried about this man who daddy is the president of the United States owning a gun while he was high but we're not but you're okay with a random person going to go buy an assault rifle uh, rifle or whatever automatic gun yeah. and then going to go do a mass but we're not you're not worried about somebody getting a hold of these automatic guns going to do a mass shooting we're not worried about that. We're worried about the president's son buying a gun on drugs. Is what we're, we're worried not about. worried about a 
we're not worried about a previous president that has multiple felony counts that is again running for a president. You right. know what I'm saying? We we're not worried about that. What I'd like to see was Joe Biden issued a whole statement about his son and how much he loved him and how much they're going to continue to support him on this journey and how he need to face what he did. Like right. he wants his son to be held accountable for his actions. And that okay, so he's still being a father at 86 years old. You get what I'm saying? Like you, st you don't stop being a parent. So he's trying to help and back his son. He didn't shy away from the whole situation. He, um, you know, he faced it up front. They didn't lie about it. No, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like it's front and center. Okay, but how many other people in this in this world has to come to the same thing? He said his son didn't like you said his son older than me. What are we talking about? <laughs> What are, what are we really talking about? That man had to have been born in the early 70s? What? Something like that? Late 60s? That's the early 70s, late 60s, yeah. Come on now. Some, some, of, the, some, some of these people that, like, yeah, he old enough to be your parent. You get what I'm saying? Like, come on now. We... We're not, we not going to do that. And I'm not making excuses or anything like that. That's just being truthful and honest. Like, every, I'm going to put it out here, every, every family got one. So Hunter Biden is 54 years old. He was born February 4th, 1970. Now he, now he got my same birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That's my so, that man was sick of people. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm like at this point it's just like why do we care about like how about we just care more about getting this country back in order exactly that, that's pandemic, all I want after a pandemic that, that lasted a month we and killed a lot of people a, right like it was like we literally shut down for a month and it was like after that month like oh we're just gonna have you guys stand apart we're gonna go back to but everybody just stay apart from each other. I'm like, this is stupid. That that messed up the whole economy. That right there right. messed up the, the entire man, economy. And the more crazy part, like, like Tina said, me and her were considered essential employees and had to still continue to show up to work every single day, not knowing if you know if you're gonna catch this, not knowing what. What's going to even happen? You know, it's it's a lot. Like I feel like as, as healthcare providers, at the end of the uh, what they call it, pandemic, we should have got some type of uh, bonus check or something for working during the pandemic. Like we should have got hell. Oh, they had they had COVID pay, but I I I never we where the, we I, had, I, we, I, I, I no. never got COVID pay. I was never at home because of COVID. I was at home because of COVID. Yes, I never received any COVID pay. Um, even though I worked in a building where people, a lot of people had COVID, we did not we didn't get hazardous pay. We didn't get nothing during that whole entire That's what I'm saying. And I still and still have to show up to work every single day. Every day. Than, every single day. And every have day. to deal with every that. Like day. Like we were stuck in like 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 we would have to wear a mask every day. Like y'all don't understand why I'm working inside of a of of a, a healthcare facility and have to wear a fucking mask all day long. Bruh, and, like, I, and, and I and I wear glasses, couldn't see Pat in my glasses, had to take my glasses off. Not weren't you know, I got small children, just wondering if I was gonna break it home. You know, thank the Lord, no nobody in my house fuck over. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was a lot of just being exposed and going in and you know it was a lot of uncertainty but again this is not the first time some type of virus floated around in recent history and we didn't shut the country down mm -mm. obama didn't shut, shut the country down what was it yeah, was it the swine like flu? Ebo ebola that's like, flu, like now. And, and we had and the swine flu and the bird flu and all that other kind of stuff yeah. that was going on. And mm -hmm. and like I said, we did shut the country down. And the thing yeah. about it is Obama yeah. put a task force in yeah. place so that in case something like this happened in the future, that the country will be prepared for it and be able to yeah. combat what's going on. 
But then we get an idiot president in office who basically don't like black people and don't like anything that Obama did. Who disbanded? Then he get rid of the task. Force. He got yeah, yeah. He got rid of the so task he got rid of the task force. So then when this whole outbreak happened, the country wasn't prepared for it. We didn't have PPE. We didn't have you know uh, what was what was we low on? I think it was like blood, it was long blood. Um, they yeah. did a lot of people donate plasma because they figured out plasma was something that can help with uh, treating COVID. So it was a lot of things that we yeah. didn't have in place for when this pandemic hit. It was, like I said, it was that previous administration's fault that it happened. And then just the blowback from COVID is not just financial, it was also mental, right? Because people were locked shut in, right? You know what I'm saying? They were worrying about their loved ones that were really sick. My father was really sick during COVID. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just stuff like that. You can't yeah, get like on the plane to go. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't get on the plane to go see like If you have if you have loved ones in a nursing home, you couldn't go inside the nursing home nope. because they you they were scared of you know them COVID and then they by them being so vulnerable, you know it's so it's easier for them to you know pass away from it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When my father was in the hospital, that it was a limitation on how many people could visit him. You know what I'm saying? Just and things like that. Even it, it, even with my my own uh, family, like my siblings, me and my siblings, we got vaccinated. But it was a lot of people in my family who didn't believe. I don't believe in the vaccine. They just trying to poison you and all this other kind of stuff. So then it got to a point where they were upset because they didn't get invited to certain family get together just because they was not vaccinated and they were upset about that. And then it's the crazy part about it is one of the family members, it's the same one who don't believe in going to a dentist, don't go to an eye doctor. You know, like like even so like even even though Tina nags me when I, I when I know it's time for me to go and like if I'm sick and I need to go see somebody and Tina have to nag me to go, but I eventually go. <laughs> no, no, I'm sick. I need to go see somebody. <laughs> like at some point, I know I need to go see somebody. <laughs> and like that's so my like, job. I'm advocating <laughs> for your health. <laughs> so then, I like and like with them, it's like the only time they're gonna go see somebody if they're in some type of pain or they just it's just at a point where I have they have to go to an emergency room. Other than that, like they're not going to do anything. Like like if you. I can just only imagine how the inside of their mouths are for not uh um, yeah. <laughs> not going to the dentist. I feel like making a dentist appointment now. On what though? I need to make one for my kids too. <laughs> All right, let me go get this good and cleaning. And myself. <laughs> like, let me go get this good cleaning done. But yeah, like people do we do better in this whole pandemic. Just do better. Just do better. Um yeah. So I can get into these clips. They are some short clips, and then I, I guess we could do final thoughts and wrap up the show for to, today. So um, let's head into the clips. Here we go. Hey, Daddy. What's up? What are we doing for dinner? Wahlburgers. I was talking to him. You call him Daddy. <laughs> Okay, first of all, real daddy was fine. Right. <laughs> but the fact that he didn't look he told, old enough to be nobody daddy. <laughs> the fact that he told his uh, his daughter's wife, or I'm not daughter's wife, the daughter's husband or boyfriend that he should leave her for calling him daddy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's something I can't do. I'm sorry, that ain't even like my cup of tea. Like, why would you call your your boyfriend or husband daddy? Yeah, like, it's just creepy to me. Room, like, like, that's yeah. real. That's just no. Mm -mm. All right, let's move on to the next one. Watch this. In this video, we learn an important lesson. When you do bad, there's some bad coming to you. Listen, 
just know, just know this is how bad and this is how evil works. The moment that you set the intention to do something bad and the moment that you put something bad in the action, that bad is coming right back to you sometimes faster than you expect. So this lady hopped out to try to steal a package from somebody's porch and then somebody got to the package before she did and then after they got the package, they stole her car because she left the door. <laughs> Yo, oh my goodness, huh? That looks like a Milwaukee, Wisconsin thing. What the fact? Now she rang the doorbell. In the first like that was about you. You was committing a crime, ma'am. Like, why would I help you? You just tried to steal my package. Like she with like, a whole ski mask on. I, I was trying to steal your package. Somebody stole your package before me. They stole my package. I cannot. I can't. I can't. I, I, I can't. I can't stand porch pirates. Okay. Uh, I'm so grateful for an indoor porch. I swear to God, I am. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Here's the next one. Oh, wait. It's, this one is actually a story. I have got to talk about it. I guess we're going to play it. Here we go. Well, no, I played the other clip, then the story. Here we go. Babe, I'm sorry I scratched your new tires on your truck. Babe. For one, it's bad enough that you curbed the new wheels on my truck as if i'm sitting here and i can see the six inch scuff mark all the way up okay it's not that it's bad it's not the tire you didn't hurt the tire you don't hurt tires babe you scratch the brand new wheels it's still the tire and i'm sorry i still can't believe you did that the one time one time i'll let you drive it And what do you do? You literally ruin them. Babe, can you just look at me for one second? I swear, what? One second. Uh, yeah, uh huh. What? Yeah. I said I'm sorry for scratching your tires. <sighs> what? It's okay. We'll we'll, we'll buff it. Out. We'll buff it. Out. Yeah. It's, we'll we'll just buff it out. Come here. We'll we'll do apologies in in the bedroom now. Come on. Come on. Not apologies in the pantry. <laughs> oh, the fact that he was having his whole rant while she was standing there naked. <laughs> she knew what to do to get him to get him a chance. <laughs> like, yeah, have, she did. I don't fucked up in his truck. I'm gonna have to give him some tonight so he won't be pissed at me. <laughs> he gonna be all right. Feed him a nice meal afterwards. He'll be good and sleep. Right. Oh, okay. You got a last clip about a porn star, so here we go. Huge gay bombshell just dropped. Austin Wolf, one of the most notorious gay adult performers, was just arrested for possession and distribution of CP. The entertainer, whose legal name is Justin Smith, exchanged hundreds of photos and videos with another person on Telegram. That person's phone was seized by the FBI as part of another investigation, but then they were able to confirm that the person he was talking to was indeed Austin Wolf. The entertainer is known for producing a lot of content organized around age play or the sort of barely legal fantasy, and people have said for a long time that they got kind of suspicious vibes from him. Horrifyingly, the media that he was found to have goes far, far beyond that line, though. Now, you said you had a story, right? Yeah, that was the story. That was the oh, story. my goodness. I can't say that um I'm not I'm not surprised. I know, right? I'm not surprised. Especially with I, that being a a porn star, like and then most of his content was based upon you know the fantasy that I'm having sex with a barely legal barely legal mm -hmm. 
person, and now I'm hearing all of a sudden now he's being charged with child, child sex, whatever crimes and stuff. It's a mess. You know how I feel about the whole barely legal and you like 20 years older than them deal. I, you know how I feel about that. Right. Who I'm hotter than so. the jalapeno coochie. Let's head into final thoughts. I'm hotter than the jalapeno coochie under all these lights right now. So uh, here, here we go. Of course, I'm first because he always do me like that. Okay, so <laughs> final thoughts for today. So this podcast episode today was basically about the debate. So I'm just going to fall back on that. Um, the election is coming around the corner, right? So I want everybody to at least take it seriously to really do your homework to make an informed decision, okay? Because you think that oh, uh, it'll just be four years this person is in office, but that four years can be a long time is in terms of policies put into place into new laws being put into place into as in new, I mean, old laws being demolished or reinstated, you know, and these things do or can drastically change your lifestyle as you know it now. So you got to think about that. You got to weigh the pros and cons of each um, candidate and then think about what it is of you and the lifestyle of your family and your kids and your kids' kids, right? Because it's a trickle down effect when it comes to government, okay? It takes a really long time to change things in the government. And I feel like once it's going in a good direction, we don't need to regress backwards, right? And then this constant tug of war between what party think it's best for the country when they are, you know, some people can be very radical in their ideals. Um, it can just be based on a lot of different things, but I just want you to think about what's best for you and your family in the long run. Not temporary, not short term. Don't think it's always oh, only four years because not. It's not. Whatever is done within a president's um, term has the potential to have an impact on the country for decades. And that's my final thought. Four more years. Four more years. And I was saying, oh, my God. We need, Joe Biden. we need four more years of Joe Biden. The next thing uh, we, next we need uh, to be done is we need better rate, uh, rate control. Something needs to be done about rate control. Something needs to be done about car insurance. Something needs to be done about these property taxes. Uh, something needs to be done about the price of food. So hopefully we can see uh, all these things happen within the next four years if we get four more years of Biden. Uh, as of right now, I don't see a lot of laws and stuff getting passed, or important laws or bills getting passed right now, just on the simple fact that we're so close to the election in November. And, you know, the Senate and everybody, they're going to try to hold off as long as they can to try to get policy stuff passed. So uh, make sure you go out and vote. Make sure you make the right decision when you go out and vote because your vote matters. I don't care what, no, I don't care what nobody ever tells you. I hate when people say your vote, my vote doesn't count. It don't matter if I vote, it does matter. Your vote does count. Please make sure that you go out and vote and make your voice heard. And oh, that was my final thought. Yay, well said. All right. Well, with that being said, this has been Same Cast, Different Day Podcast. Um, I'm Martel Froden. And, and I'm Tina Marie. Uh, don't forget to head over to repsports.com and you get your uh, your discounts and uh, habits365.com use your discount. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's showing the, the thing that I had got her. I think it was for Christmas. I'm not sure. I drank a lot. I can't remember when I bought this stuff. But, um, mm -hmm. And uh, make sure that uh, you head over to our uh, merch store. Uh, you can get the link to that through um, direct.me slash Savecast Different Day Podcast. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We hope we hope that we was as informative as possible when it comes to, you know, this uh, what's going on with the economy and voting and election and stuff like that. So 
we we hope you enjoyed it. So once again, thank you all for tuning in to this episode of St. Cast Every Day Podcast, and we'll see you all on the next one. Bye.